Welcome to the old Iron Lover channel. My name is Bob and this video is going to be uh, about my 13 inch South Bend lathe. The lathe had developed a problem and I decided while I had it apart uh, I would fix a couple of other problems in here. Um, one of them is going to be uh, a little bit of backlash on the back gear and back gear needs adjustment just sl uh, slipping out of, out of uh, mesh when it gets load on it. Now the other one is a problem with in play on the uh, spindle. So uh, they'll be in two parts. The first part will be disassembling and inspection and, and that. And there'll be uh, uh, several places along the way where I'm pointing out some cautions, techniques, whatever for uh, disassembling it without damaging it. The next part of the project will be uh, disassembling the spindle and inspecting it and making all the adjustments to it and all that. And um, we've had a problem with it that's occurred uh, a while back where I have a, a fair amount of spindle play on the, uh, the end play. And I noticed that when I was turning some material that the chuck was wandering in and out. The, the in and out vibration can give you an uneven finish or there's uh, who knows what all. Uh, there's an adjustment back here for that. Uh, I did adjust it once and the uh, problem came back. And I've also noticed that when it's running that the, uh, this end of the belt here runs up against the, the edge of this uh, uh, bull gear here. So anyway, and then the last thing is when I put it in back gear, it tends to walk back out of the back gear. Uh, and the back gear is a little rattly. So I'm going to see if I can uh, correct both of those problems as well. So uh, we'll get to it. Okay, first thing to point out is on this lathe and probably many others, there is a data plate in here that tells you the order in which to remove uh, the various parts of the bearing caps. The, you need to pay attention to that. The tools we're going to need is a couple of screwdrivers and a couple of Allen wrenches. And uh, so the first thing we're going to do is take the, the back gear guards off. Hey, we're going to need to open up the back side here. Okay, now I'll just kind of go over what's here. We have the, uh, the bull gear, and it on this lathe is disconnected with the dog that you slide in and out. If you pull it to the inside, then the cone pulley and the spindle spin separately. There's two plugs on each of the bearing caps. You remove those, and inside the plugs, there's a couple of uh, flathead screws 
And those flathead screws are going to be adjusting or pulling up on a uh, bearing expander inside, and you'll see more about that later on. On this end, we have the, uh, the adjustment nut for the these two thrust bearings here. And uh, we have the gear that runs all the gear train down below, the, the forward and reverse and the, the uh, quick change gearbox and all that. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is take all of the, the stuff off at the end that I can get off. Get a bigger screwdriver. There we go. Let me just loosen this collar up just a little bit. And there's, uh, I'll go through the adjustment and methods and all that for it when we go back to putting it back together again. There's the collar. This gear just slides off. There's a key. And then there's this thrust bearing here. In order to get the thrust bearing out, you got to move the reverser just right. Okay, now we're we're that far. And we're going to go ahead and take apart the, the bearing cap. So on, one more thing. If you're going to remove this, you have to get the belt out of the way. And if you have, there's two of you, you can just leave it like this, slide it to one side so you got a lot of slack. But with one person, it's a little easier, I think, to just go ahead and pull the pin on the belt. Like so. And then repin it. Just let it hang here on the casting. So the next thing we're going to do is take these four little uh, plugs off. They're just pipe plugs. Now down inside, there is a, a little flat-headed screw in each of these holes. And what I like to do, I didn't say anything about this in the book, but what I like to do is loosen them up just a little bit, a couple of turns. Like so. They need to be all the way out to take the bearing cap off. And once I get it like that, what I want to do is go down there with the screwdriver, just tap it. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing that expander back down against the spindle. And what we'll next say, we'll talk more about that uh, expander later on here. Now we can go ahead and take the screws the rest of the way out. And there's a lock washer under each one of them.
And my preference also is to take a little magnet. In this case, I just magnetized my screwdriver temporarily. Pull those screws out, otherwise you wind up dropping them. Get all the screws and lock washers out. Now we now we're nice and safe on the uh, on the the bearings. Like I say, we'll we'll see more about that in a minute. There's no torque specification for these bearing caps. They are to be moderately tight. <laughs> so I have an exactly moderately tight foot pounds. Okay, and then uh, the next thing is to rock the cap slightly. And then very carefully lift it up and turn it over. So you can see these shims in here. And what we want to do is make sure the shims stay where they were, if we can. Now we, we can check them anyway and put them back the way they are if they're something wrong. So I'm going to put that cap up here. That would do the same thing here. lock is in the way. Switch this over. Get the shims off of here. And I don't know how all the shim packs are, but it looks to me like the original it has got a, a laminated stack that kind of comes or sort of all stuck together and you just peel off whatever you need to get rid of to get your clearance set. And these have been around a while. I've actually made some to make up the proper pack I need. We have uh, the front bearing and the back bearing. The front bearing has a larger expander on it than the back bearing. And if you look close, you'll see a little F stamped on it. The F goes that away, goes toward the chuck end. And the little bearing has an F scribed on it and the big bearing has an S-scribed on it. I'm going to uh, just repunch those real quick. I'm going to go ahead and uh, lift it out of here and put it on the bench, so we'll meet you back over there. Okay, get that little piece out. Lock here. Now this should slide right out, and it does. Now the problem we have here is this. It's running into the thrust bearing on this end. Oops. Okay, I wrapped it up real good. and then uh, just touched it with a grinder and washed it off real good after that. Okay, let's put this piece back together while we still remember where the parts go.
<coughs> okay, that's back together. Okay, it goes back in there. Our little clip goes back in. Retainer, whatever. Got the uh, reverser back in. Now we have a couple of more gears to add to the train. Okay, I'll remember to tighten that. This one here later, I don't have uh, something to hold it right now. Get it all put back together will be good. Okay, uh, we've gone as far as we can go with this gear train. We've gotten uh, the little thing cleared up. I will show you something after I go grab a piece of wire. These little spring-loaded uh, wicks need to be held down when they're uh, when we're assembling it. Uh, Obviously, you don't want to get it cocked or something and have uh, have a major problem. So, uh, South Bend has provided us with a way to do that. Okay, we have to turn these grease cups out of the way a little bit. Or oil cups, not grease cups. a smidge like that, maybe a little more. There we go. Now we can take these cat plugs out here. Anyway, it's something like that that will hold it in place. I don't know if you can see that. I'll move you in a little closer. Let's 
bolts. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, here's the spindle and the cone pulley. There's the spindle. And there's the cone. Now the first thing I want to do is inspect all the pieces here. You can see what kind of condition they're in. And uh, I'm going to uh, get some pictures of it here in a minute. I'll come back to that. The, uh, the bull gear is pressed onto the shaft, so it has to be pressed back off. And I don't think my arbor press is big enough. So I'm going to take it out and put it on the bearing press and push it off. Uh, because I want to be able to get this bearing out and have a good look at it. So, <coughs> Okay, it looks like the uh, bearing press is the table's a little high. So we will drop it down a notch. Let's see if that fits it okay. Go down another notch. If this presses out easily, I'm just going to go with it. Otherwise, I'm going to get the bearing splitter on it. <clears throat> I've got a, a whole bunch of wood down underneath this, so anything that pops out of the bearing press generally uh, is going to land on something soft. So. Don't anticipate this being real tight, so I think we'll come right out of here. Okay, that's it. Okay, let's uh, set the cone away for a second. Get this key out of there if I can. No, nope, don't want to come out. There it goes. Okay, there's the bull gear, and there's the bearing. Now we're going to get a good close look at these, and I don't know if the light's good enough in here. Let me just try a test shot here. I'm going to do some stills of this.
It's looking pretty decent. Don't see any thing that worries me too much. Okay, let's get a look at the uh, these bearing expanders just so you know what it looks like and what's going on. Uh, you can see there's a little dovetail there on the bottom of these. And you can see on the end of the bearing that it's got a little dovetail on it too. I'm trying to get the light so you can see it. So when you put the bearing on, it's going to be kind of a loose fit on the shaft, but uh, what, you, what this bearing expander does is it pulls up and expands the bearing. It pushes it out against the uh, against the shell, the the bearing cap and the and the casting below, and that assures that the bearing is all the way out so it's against something rigid and it also assures that you have a, a little bit of space in here for an oil film and it's a consistent uh, type thing so anyway a little bit about the surface inside the bearing um, you'll probably possibly see some minor scoring in there now, I've heard people talk about why don't we take a flap wheel and clean all that up I want to vote for that being a terrible idea. Uh, anytime you use any kind of abrasive on this kind of bearing, you're going to leave particles from the uh, abrasive material embedded in the brass, and it's or bronze, whatever that is. But anyway, um, it's going to be uh, a problem from then on out. If you don't have a big gouge that has raised edges on it, uh, which I I've not seen it. Of course, I haven't seen a whole lot of these. This is, you know, I've only had a few lays apart. But they, uh, it's, it's not of any consequence. Don't worry about it. You're really looking for enough bearing surface here to support the weight of the, of the forces that are put onto the, onto the spindle. So uh, there's a little bit of darkening in here. And honestly, the first time I took this apart right after I got it, I uh, uh, took a look at that and I really didn't do anything with it. Um, I want to hit it with a little bit of uh, cleaner just to see if it'll clean up, but I would not dream of putting anything in there to abrasively remove that. Okay, let's talk just a little bit more about these bearing expanders. Now this one here is pretty loose in here right now, but if, this, if the bearing is in the cap, it's going to be squeezed down and this is going to pull out on it. If you have it in the bearing, have it all put together in the bearing, what will happen is this will be screwed to the inside of the bearing cap. Let me grab the bearing cap. Okay, inside we're going to see like this, and it's going to be screwed up against the bottom of this recess, or the top of this recess. And the bearing's going to be squeezed down on it a little bit. And then when you pop the, pair, the cap off, you're going to yank this out. And what you'll wind up doing is tearing up the edges of this, this uh, dovetail on the bearing itself and causing it to be pretty useless for expanding the bearing anymore. So that said, uh, I think we're ready to put it back together. While I got it apart, for those of you who haven't seen the inside of one of these before, uh, let me turn it a little bit so you can see all of it. Okay, this little dog right here is currently in the back gear position, and if you bring it up, it comes out and it engages one of these two notches here, and that locks the spindle and the uh, bull gear together, and essentially the, the spindle together. And so you have uh, you know, a direct drive. You disengage it, then you can engage the back gear. This will spin faster than this will spin. Well, thanks for watching. And as always, if you like what you see, you can give me a thumbs up or even subscribe. It's always welcome. Uh, comments that you think I might be interested in hearing are, are welcome as well.
Um, this was the first of, of two videos on the South Bend Lay Spindle. And um, the second one will have a, a couple of surprises in it, one of them bad, one of them good. And uh, we'll also learn how to uh, shim the, the headstock bearings so that uh, you know, we don't have any excessive play or excessive heat. So with that, um, till the next video, happy trails.